Hey guys, welcome back. In the fifth lesson of the official Bolt series, we're going to set up the objective for our platformer. What I want to happen is when I touch the objective, when I get there and collide with it, I want to load the next level. So level one goes to level two, level two goes to level three, and so on. And when I do that, I also want to be able to save my progress. So if I come back into the game, say I close the game out and I come back and I play again, I want to be able to load the last level I was on. So whenever we beat a level, not only do I want to load the next level, but I want to save the next level as the currently unlocked level. And to do that, we're going to use a very cool feature of Bolt. So let's get started by setting up the collisions with our objective, this flag right here. So if I select it, I come down. What I want to do is I want to add a flow machine, obviously. There we go. And again, create a new macro for it. Let's call it objective. And for this, we don't need either of these events. So this is going to be handled by the player running into the flag. So we want a collision event. We know how to do that on collision enter 2D. So whenever the collision starts. And I want to compare the tag to see if it is the player. Compare tag and player. Now this seems very familiar, right? We just did this. But we're going to do it again. And again, branch off. So if we did hit the player, I want to do something. If we did not hit the player, then there's something I don't want to do. I don't know, maybe we, we, we want to do something else. But for now, all I care about is did we hit the player? So pass the control into that branch. So if we did hit the player, what I want to do is load the next scene. So we can go to load scene, and I want to load scene by scene name. And now as an example, let's test this out by typing in level two. I'm currently on level one. The next level will be level two. Here in a bit, we'll make this more dynamic. But for now, let's test this out. Get over to my flag, touch it. And now I'm on level two. Cool. But if we're on level one, level two makes sense. But if we're on level two, we want to load level three. And if we're on level three, we want to load level four and so on. So how can we do that? Well, the way we're going to handle that is we're going to create an, an object variable that will keep track of whatever the next level to unlock is on a per scene basis. So on level one, that variable will be level two. And on level two, that variable will be level three and so on. So let's do that create an object variable and I will call it scene, maybe scene to load, something like that. And then it's going to be a string, right? Just the, the level name, whatever the scene name is. And then just drag this out into my graph. And let's pass this in as the scene name. So now on level one, this will say level two. And then from level two, we'll set that to say level three. Pretty cool. Hit the flag, level two. But one thing you probably noticed is this is exactly what we did on our spikes. We have a collision check here that compares it to a tag and then we control the flow based on the result. It's the exact same thing we're doing here. So what I want to do is create another super unit that will use these units and we can pass in a string value to compare the tag to and then pass out the control value as well as whatever object we're colliding with. I'll create another bolt flow macro and I will call it on collision with. And what I'm going to do is go to my objective. And I'll take all this, these three units here, and I'll come back into my on collision with and paste them. So much like the output unit that we set up for our on ground check, we're going to set up an input and an output for this one. So I'm going to create an input unit. It's called input and it's in nesting. There we go. And now this is going to allow us to pass in from the left side an input value much like you have on these units, right? But to do that, we have to set up our inputs. So I want to be able to pass in a value input that will be the tag in string form. There we go. And this will be the value that we pass in to the super unit. So now to show you this on objective, if I create a super unit from this, I can now pass in a tag value. But for this, I would have to drag out and create a string literal and then type in We'll say player and we could do that but that's no fun especially when you could define a default value just like this check has default value go back into objective and you can see you can type in player directly right there pretty cool but now we have to do something with this information that we have if we did in fact collide with a player the flow has to go one direction if we did not and we collided with something else the flow has to go another direction so to do this, we'll create an output unit, so output. And again, I want to output the object that we collided with because if you look in our spikes, we're passing that collider object 
to our trigger for the custom event so it knows what object to call that event on. So I do need that information for this collision check. So I'm gonna pass that out as well. So this will be a value output of type game object, and I will call it object is fine. So the output type will be a game object, and I will call it object. So we can pass out the collider object so we have the information of what we collided with, just like that. Now if we look back in our objective, we have input of tag and output of what we collided with. But I have to be able to control the flow from this as well. So if we did in fact collide with whatever tag we passed in, I wanna be able to load the next scene. If we did not, then I don't wanna do anything. So what I wanna do is on collision with, we'll have a control output, and I'm gonna call this target. So if we collided with a target, in this case, whatever the tag is, if we in fact collided with that, this is where the flow will go. What if we collided with other though? I'll just type in other. So we missed the target, but we hit something. So that is the result for that. Whatever the other object is, we can control the flow from there and then decide to do something else with that if we wanted to, but we don't have to, so it's fine. So I'm gonna pass in true. So we, we collided with the player and false. We collided with something else. And I take my input tag and pass it into my compare tag. Now back in objective, we have this cool unit now. And what I can do is replace these three units with this one unit. Delete, bring this down. And I'll say, if we did collide with the player, I wanna load a scene. That's it, that's all we need that for. Pretty cool. And we can also replace our collision check on the spikes here by getting rid of all this, saying on collision with, and again, player. And if we collided with the player, we wanna fire off this event, and we also wanna pass in the object that we collided with, in this case, the player, so it knows where to call that event at. So let's test this out, fall on the ground, loads the scene, good. Objective, loads the next scene, great. Exactly what we want. Now let's set up our saving system, so whenever we get to the next level, we can save our progress. We're gonna do that in objective as well. So to do this, we'll be using the saved variable type, which allows us to actually write information to it and it will save that data even if the application is closed, which is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna save this with a name that is a string. It's gonna be the level name and then underscore unlocked to show us that is the variable we're looking for to check if a level is unlocked. And it is gonna be a bool, so true or false. If it is unlocked, it'll be true. If it is not, it'll be false. So we can do that by saying add unit and I want to set saved variable. Now we do not have any variables defined, but we can do this dynamically as you know, and it will create it for us. Now this requires a name for the variable and then also the value. In this case, it can be any type, but we're going to use a bool, so true or false. So to do that, if we're saving this variable, that means we unlocked it. So I want to set it as true. So I can come down and say a bool literal and check that box to say true. So we did in fact complete it if we got this far. And what I wanna do is I wanna pass the flow from the collision check right into the variable. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then once we save the variable, we'll load the next level. Make sure we save the variable first though, just so we know it is in fact saved. And then we can go into the next level, pretty simple. And now the name of this, I will just test it by saying level two unlocked. Now, as you know, we want this to be more dynamic, so we will actually have to change this to show you the actual level you unlock. So if you're on level three, it unlocks level four, and so on, in the same vein that we did the level load. But we can test this just like this. Go to the objective, we load the next level, and if I go over to my saved variables tab, I can see I have level two unlocked, true. That's exactly what we want, but we wanted to do that depending on whatever level we're on. So if we're on level two, we want it to say level three unlocked once we get to the objective. So to do that, we can use our object variable that determines what the unlocked level is, in this case, scene, level two, then on level two to be level three, you get the point. And then we can just tag onto the end of that, the underscore unlocked. So to do that, I'll just drag this variable out. And what I wanna do is on the end of this, I wanna add the underscore unlocked. So I will do something called concat. Now, if we concatenate something, it's going to take the value that we're passing in and on the end of it, add the second value. 
or the third value, or the fourth value. In my case, I want to concatenate two arguments, so we'll select that one. So the first value is our scene name that we're unlocking. The second one is going to be a string that is underscore unlocked. Great. So now it'll say unlock level name, and then underscore unlocked. And if we do that, it'll check it as true, save the variable, and then load the next scene. And now we pass the resulting value into our set saved variable. And that is all we need to be able to save our progress and load the next scene based on the scene that we are currently in. And the next lesson will set up the heads up display. I will see you there.